In the American West, Richard Avedon. This is the fourth edition and published by Abrams, published in 94. There are obviously other editions and other covers for this. I've seen a male worker, or a, a male, an individual man on the front cover. If I remember which one it was going through this, I will show you. This book's still widely available. Love it or hate it. There's quite a mixed review about Avedon's work. Some people hate it, some people love it. I think, away from all of the loves and the hates, I think in terms of just portraiture and the strength of portraiture, you have to appreciate it. There's the critics which look at it about how it portrays a certain class of people or the class of people represents the American West. And then there's stuff which Avedon says about photography being the truth, but there's arguments against that saying, well, Avedon puts these people in a white background. It just didn't happen. He made them. So I get the arguments, and I think that's important. I get the perspectives and everything, and I see the importance of this, but then again, there's the, the rhetoric or whatever it is which surrounds the development of this, the representation of this, and who these people are. Nevertheless, I am going to look at it purely for Port Richard only. You can make your own mind up and you can research it, you can have an opinion on it. Go and buy the book. I would. It's beautiful. There is Laura Wilson, who was his assistant for a long time, published a book on how Avedon worked and it was a nice insight into the way he processed his photography in a way of, of, of the subject matter, his travels and his commercial work and his documentary work and the commissions he, he undertook. So, I think this is just a lovely book and we'll have a look at it purely for Port Richard. For those of you who are not aware of Avedon's work, he shoots on 10.8 plate cameras, I think if that's what you want to call it. 10.8 cameras, which is a 10.8 neg, which is a representation of that there, that's the shape. And if I put in a piece of A4 next to it, you get a sort of size. The 10.8 is roughly the size of a an A4, roughly. I know many of you purists will say it's not, but that's something like, what is it? That's like 8 by 11 or something, isn't it? Yeah, about 11 and a half. So 10.8, that's the size of the neg roughly, of what these are. So, let's look at it for Port Richard. Let's look at it for a lovely body of work, a, a part of a bigger collection. It is 174 pages, soft cover, 11 by 14, which is a lovely print size as well. Not that he prints them this small. When I've seen his work on a gallery wall, it is huge. I mean, absolutely massive. And I think with the size of the neck, they deserve to be massive because the detail is incredible. And that's something you won't get really looking at, at what I've got to show you here. And when you look at the book, you'll see character, you'll see how faces portray the body and how the body portrays the person and how light brings it all together with a white background. And then you just look into the eyes. You see all of that but you won't get the quality of the, of the 10 a and you have to really go and appreciate it when it's blown up massive and you see that it's just incredible um, perspective of, of, of looking at somebody because you just want to keep looking at these. So let's, let's go through it. So here we go. We've got this amazing picture on here. I'm going to drop it down a little bit in a minute. There's the stuff here. It's seen a lot of the stuff falls on the um, on the right side. I love the technique he uses here where he shoots almost like a, a diptych and he's using the, the camera. He's got the people in a white screen, so that's what he does. He puts a big white screen up where he is. He sets up his big camera and he has loads of reflectors and then he gets a subject. Now, how he finds a subject, you know, is, is another thing. You know, he travels around. 
He's got a sustenance, he's got a schedule, he's got a, he works stuff out. But you can find all that out if you go and buy Laura Wilson's book. But I'm not going to play too heavily on that. Well, I just want to look at the quantity, the, the context of the pictures. So most of it's on the right. And like I said, he uses this sort of diptych approach where he puts the, pe the people, I guess, the three ladies here um, in front of the white screen and then shoots them as two, as two plates. Just intriguing, he hasn't tried to shoot them as three people. And I think it would be difficult for him to do that with the, the type of lens he does and making it, he doesn't shoot, tend to shoot in a, in a way where he's like a, a massively wide angle lens, you know? So it, it, an interesting way that he's developed that style to keep in the sort of format he uses all the time. Anyway, like I said, 174 pages. It was initially, this is a little bit here by Richard Avedon, the Amon Centre Museum in Fort Worth, Texas, and that's who funded it, had built a unique collection of 19th and 20th century photographs of the West. Wilder saw a portrait of Wilbur Powell, a ranch foreman, which is one of a series of photographs I had taken in July 78. In Ennis, Montana, he proposed that I continue this work with the sponsorship of the museum. We agreed and the exhibition would be completed in five summers, that it would open at the Amon Centre in the fall of 85, and that the original negatives and set of prints would become a permanent part of the museum's archives. When Wilder died in April 79, the support he had given was continued by the staff of the museum. Wonderful. So that's how it came about. So with each picture there's a little, there's a date, there's a name, there's what he is and where, where Richard came across him. So I'm going to drop this so you might find there is some crop on it, but it doesn't matter. Well, let's have a look. Now, this is Alan Sylvie Drifter, Route 93, Chloride, Nevada. That's the name of the place, I presume, Chloride. 12th of the 14th, 80. And this is the shot we saw. Loretta, Ludilla and Kay Johnson, co-presidents of the Loretta Lynn Fan Club. Wow. Beautiful, isn't it? You do want to get to know these people, don't you? The, the, the beauty and the quality of the, the shot. And I think, ask yourself questions about the whole purpose of this and taking the individual away from the environment and just looking at the, at the, the person as the, the, the sort of narrative and letting you read into what you think this person is about. Clifford Feldner, unemployed ranch hand, Golden, Calif Cal Colorado, 83. And let then you can make a decision on where you want to take him and what he did next. And the beauty of this book is we ask questions and we're asking questions about where these people ended up. How did they get there? And it doesn't answer any of this. It just, it just, it just makes you, it just gives, it, it just leaves you wanting to question certain things, isn't it? It's beautiful. I'll jump up a little bit on this so you get the full frame there. My system here doesn't really cope with big books that well. And this is, like I said, it's a, it's a beautifully big book. This is Benson James Drifter, V66. Talk about this. Talk about it, you know, talk about it, discuss. I haven't got the answers. I just want to give you an insight into this work. And I think something like this leaves a lot of questions. And in some good, some bad, as, you know, what they do in portraying him, how did they get him, did they pay him money, whatever. And this shot here, no disrespect to Patricia, she's a housekeeper, but it's like, it's quite a normal picture. It's nothing where you, you can't really see the her life in her face. She looks very normal, looks very at peace with herself. She looks, you know, a, a nice looking lady and stuff like that. Whereas with Benson, you can just see his life in his eyes and his clothes. And it opens up different questions and... And here's a little bit here on the, about talking about the summer months travelling in the West. And this is uh, Richard Evan again. Vivian Richardson, like granddaughter, Heidi Zaka. I think it's so wide here, I'm never going to be able to cut a page off, so I'll just keep going with double sided. So this is Carol Crittenden, bartender, Butte, Montana 81, Bill Curry, drifter, interstate. It's interesting how he got these guys 
to do this and what's he achieving is he what's he saying about the west you know is this a book of the have nots or if he did a book of the haves like the the the, the sort of wealthy how would we view that when we strip them of all their wealth and put them in a book he's sort of stripping stripping the the drifters of everything they have and putting them into book and letting you question their personality by the way they look i don't know i don't know the answers but it's interesting if you think about it Lael Burr, coal miner, and his son, Kerry Phillips. Well, they look very well-dressed guys. They look very, you know, normal. And it, it's interesting. Very well presented, I, I, I mean. And James Lincoln's oil field worker, Sandra Bennett, 12-year-old, Rocky Ford, Carolina, 1980. Some incredibly beautiful, strong images. You just want to find out about it, you know. It doesn't say what Debbie is. The janitor and Mortel made. 1981. Wow, look at that. There's a rancher. I'm jumping here. Um, about a third of the way through. Shipping clerk, Denver, Colorado. David Beeson, 1981. What's he doing with these pictures, do you think? Are we looks looking at the character of the West? Are we looking at are we looking at the people? Is this a sort of super individual identity of the West? Is this just like is this what people in the West solely look like? How do you quantify it? Or is this just a representation of where he turned up, who he found? and who he approached, pure look. Interesting, a grain thresher, 1983, and Rocky in Idaho, a lot of from the same place, so he's 15. An oil field worker, he looks really young, 1979. I think there is a beauty to them, isn't there? I mean, you got it regardless of any criticisms or anything. You know, there there is a beauty to this. There's a beauty in a time and a place with these people and who they are, irrelevant of where they are, but where they are is important. But who they are, stripped of anything, but purely them is important. Alfred Lester, dryland farmer, eighty-two. North Dakota. Look at there, you can see the sort of long exposure there, can't you? I never really associated it with much long exposure. This, I thought it was shot over brightly and then brought down in a, in a very bright scenario, and then brought down with the with the shutter speed and aperture. You can see there's a sort of sheen on this coat. That's beautiful. Let's come down on this. Let's have, let's have a proper look at the detail. I'll, I'll, I'll open a couple of pages like this. This is Carl Horford, unemployed blackjack dealer, Nevada, in Reno. Just look at the quality, and let's just jump a couple. Yeah, look at that. It's just stunning. There is a beauty, isn't it? I don't know if many of you have worked with Tenet, and I have all but very briefly in about three sheets when I was a student and it was a massive 10 camera in my faculty department and I used to look at it and I was playing with a Wister 5.4 at the time and I would look at it and think one, one day I'm going to do it and one day I managed to con some performer of the technical department of the university and they give me the camera and I went out doing what I was doing with a with a 5.4 and it was, I found it really difficult. It was such a difficult process. Whereas Avedon used to shoot commercially, he used to shoot his, his celebrities and stuff. I presume with just with 10 8, he may have used a 5 4. I, I, I don't know, I can't remember. If somebody could discuss that, that would be fantastic. But I, I realised using this format 
is so difficult. It so, takes such a skill. I am aware, and don't quote me if I'm wrong, please tell me, Alex Soth uses 10-8 a lot, and I love the Mississippi Delta stuff. I love Alex Soth's use of his, his sort of almost repertage feel he has to using a sort of 5-4 or a 10-8, and, and I think there's a beauty in that. And, and Soth must have been influenced by by Aberdeen, just on the format alone, you know. This is, let me just put this up. This is Roberto Lopez, oil field worker. Oh, it's beautiful, man. It's just, you can see sometimes there's not, there's there's not a lot of light. And I wonder if we just got in there quickly and set up and shot. And you can see in the eyes, I don't know if there's much actual reflection or time. I, I'm not really sure, but this feels more snapped, it's quick. And they put him in front of there and, and, and the screen and just shot him. There's a great shot shot of him in a of Aberdeen in a field and at near a barn and he's got the white screen taped up and he's got his camera which is massive and he's, and he's under his hood and he's got his assistants around him. So for this guy here, Roberto, it must have been quite a task or an ordeal when he when he's got like all this crew with a big camera taking the time to shoot him and you know it's not like now you've got to just pop a pop a button and you shoot. This is a serious business. This large format camera business. Craig Panique, drummer, high school band, 1981. It's a beautiful, the light. The whites have held it. If that is white, it's held it beautifully. Danny Lane, 14. Christina Cole, 17 year old, Colorado. Look at the eyes. Cashier and that's a cotton farmer, Mr. A. Bean, and this is Peggy. I hope you like some of these images. They're, they're just they're gorgeous, and I think you should go out and support his work. This, you can get this book. It might even, you know, inspire you to go and do something yourself, but it surely inspires me. Now, Avedon's always inspired me. I just think, just the way he he approaches and portrays the subject, again, for right or for wrong, but the way he just captures something with his individuals, and regardless of anything, his skill in capturing some form of personality, of individualism with each person using the light and the white screen, and being able to grab somebody's attention long enough to be able to create something which is which leaves you wanting a little more, regardless of the story of how they got there, is pretty special. And this is um, these are all coal miners, as you can guess, from Colorado. Now I've got something here. What's this? Oh yeah, look at that. That again. He's got a triptych now with a plate. And these are in Reliance coal miners. 1979, wow, they're men. Look at that. And here is the famous Mr. Fisher and his bee shop. He's a beekeeper in California, 1981, Ronald Fisher. There's some write-ups to this and how this happened and how they, I think they put the queen bee on and then they put the bees on and the sort of shots behind the scenes of this, which you can see in the internet and and stuff like that, you know, it's not like it's all all documented and noted in other books and stuff. So this is the background, which I think is really nice, which sort of opens up a little bit to the people and and like how we returned to Butte in '82 and '80, and about the conditions and the the, the boom town aftershock, the copper, the, the price of copper. You know, I, I think it's I think it's quite a nice finale to these pictures it hasn't even though the pictures don't give away much apart from who the person could be or is the, this is a sort of story to finish it and I think this is a nice sentiment and it's done by Laura Wilson who I think has kept since this um, Avedon's legacy alive in lots of ways acknowledgements from Montana, Nebraska, Colorado, California and Arizona this book was designed by Marvin Israel and Elizabeth Aberdeen. I, I think I think everything it's worth this book 
it's a, it's a sign of great photography. I think the arguments within the context of it all is go away and have an argument about it. Go and buy the book and, and, and argue about it and talk about it. And maybe take something away from it and put it into something of your own. Thank you.